Well, good Tuesday afternoon. I'm Rick Dancer. Welcome to Get Real with Rick Dancer. And this is about as real as it gets. So the Night Shelter Program with St. Vincent de Paul now has a permanent home. A permanent home. This is the program that used to travel around to different churches in the area. And every week it would be at a different church for families who needed a place to stay. And now, um, I'll, I'll let them tell you how this happened, but thanks to a very generous family in this community, um, we now have this church off of West Amazon, uh, formerly Calvary Ch Fellowship, and then it was, what was it after that, do you remember? Oh, uh, it's uh, uh, Wellsprings. Wellsprings yeah. uh, Church. Now, this is, um, it's the, the night shelter. And Terry McDonald with St. Vincent de Paul, so, God, this is... <laughs> yeah, I know. I, I'm really excited. Yeah. I've, I've covered the night shelter and all the churches. I mean, dozens yeah. of churches yeah. that have helped you guys for years. Yep, yep. Yeah, it's a, it's a miraculous transformation. I, we've been talking about finding a place to put the night shelter instead of from church to church or permanent setting for probably almost 30 years. And, and of course, when we thought this was a temporary program instead of a cornerstone program in the community, we thought, wow, why bother? Why bother about that? We're not going to need it. Uh, almost 30 years on, it became very clear that we needed a permanent headquarters for this. So, Terry, you were saying, I, 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 we were just having too much fun because yeah. this is like, you guys, this is a permanent place. So what they've had to do in the past is rely on generosity of the churches very, in the community. And how many were involved, you know? Oh, up to 40. 40 different churches in the community where every week these families would, would transition to that next church. Well, now those churches can come here to a building. The families don't have to move and they can stay right here in a beautiful building that's made for them, not sharing space and you were saying last year at Thanksgiving time you were watching the number of families that were homeless yeah. coming into yeah. our shelter and and you were go, you were saying what well is what I thought I was thinking and saying was is that you know I couldn't find a way to, to accommodate the number of people we were seeing and and my concern was that we were going to end up having people living out in the street with families with kids and there was just no way there was no way that I could possibly figure out how I was going to get all these people in and I sort of thought time for a miracle because I need one now and, and, uh, and, and, and you got and, it and a week or so later the offer came forward saying maybe you ought to go ahead and get that church and this family said they paid for it and I said wow that was quick <laughs> <laughs> so it opens uh, Monday this coming Monday to the families but this this Friday anybody from the community can come from four to six I think four to six four, four to six. six there's an ice cream social neighbors are gonna come the neighbors are happy about it yep they're uh, yep. they see a positive thing here which is really wonderful and so you can come and tour the place and see what it's all about and find out if you want to volunteer to help out as well and Absolutely. a lot of those churches are still coming back anyway. oh yes oh yes uh, and we're looking for also for service groups and others now because you know, service group wouldn't have a building, but this place gives a service group like Rotary or Active 2030 or whatever else a way to participate. So it's not just faith communities anymore. It's uh, kind of everybody. It's kind of a community effort now. All right. Terry, thank you. No pleasure. Now, you go to work. I got things to I do. I got to go. Okay. Thank Terry's going to go work, and I'm going to take you inside here. So, so this is the church, or the former church, and um, this is the place. Beautiful building. And now it's going to be the home to the night shelter, a permanent home. Now, you guys, we may lose a little bit of our signal. I'm going to hope that we can keep this on here. All right, come here, Eileen. Hello. So tell people who you are. I'm Eileen Sigler, Chief Development Officer. Just my 10th day here with St. Vincent de Paul. I'm honored to be with the organization. So nice to walk into a place where you have a community oh my goodness. that does this, huh? Oh my gosh. I have never in my 22 years of working in fundraising, I have never seen a facility quite like this. And I've never seen the level of entrepreneurial business that we're doing at this organization. And at the same time, using that to do so much for the community and the people here in Eugene. Can you believe that like the churches that have done this for... Oh God! Oh my gosh! Years. I mean, have have taken a these very folks long time. in, yes, and now they'll still be here, but yes. they don't have to go anywhere. That's right. And uh, two weeks at a time, they were doing it before, I believe, and now they'll be able to come here and serve the food here. And in fact, that's a very important point because those churches are now going to be doubling, going from I think six to ten families to twenty, and so that is quite a much larger responsibility to be able to make all that food. Um, and so we're help, hoping the community will step up and consider supporting us with food, um, donations, uh, cash, 
gift cards and those can be delivered to the First Place Family Center to be able to help the churches serve all these people with wonderful, delicious food every night. And so people can come on Friday and check it out, walk through four to six, it's an open house, and they can kind of find out what this is all about, find out opportunities, other opportunities to get involved. Yes, we're having an ice cream social from four to six on Friday. Well, and then there'll be a ribbon cutting that's for, you know, legislators and people like that on Monday. So um, yeah, they can see what's going on here, and then the families will be uh, here starting on Monday, October first. Well, welcome to St. Vincent. Thank you, welcome thank you. Hello, everybody. Thank you. Yes, yeah, nice Make to have you. Make you feel welcome here. Yeah, yeah. Well, yeah. This is a great way to do it. <laughs> yeah. This is, way, this is a really good way to get on our good side. Hey, hey. Cool. <laughs> okay, I'm gonna go talk to the, you. I guess you have to be named Eileen to work here. You do. Um, it's we're, it's we're a working on it. we're it's a prerequisite. Out. But yeah. you guys, you guys are familiar with this, Eileen. Hi there. So tell them the story of how this came about. Yeah, so we had a private donor who came in and did a tour with First Place Family Center. It was great, we got to show them the preschool and kind of talk about all the services that we provide. And in that conversation, they asked us what we thought the biggest need was. And we communicated that what we really needed was a permanent place for our night shelter program so that families weren't moving from church to church every week and so that we could meet the need of more families, the demand for more families needing shelter. So in our, other, in our program, traditionally, it could hold about six to 10 families, and we really wanted to grow that. So there's now how many can go here? 20, so we can serve 20 families, so we've doubled, we've doubled the, the ability to serve, and also just being able to have a trauma-informed sort of facility that the kids can get to know this place, they can feel comfortable here, they actually have their own spot, and so, um, we communicated that to the private donor, and three weeks later, they said that they had found a site that they were interested in. So they bought for us. this they, church. They bought for the, you. They bought the church, yeah, oh, specifically God. for this program. It was great. That is yeah. so amazing. Yeah, and what's even gr more amazing is that this is just our middle place. So we have this temporary shelter set up now, but we have plans in the next two to four years to build. 18 one-bedroom apartment units for our shelter family so that they can have the dignity of having their own That apartment. is so awesome. Hey, Jason, um, just to answer your question, the Saginaw Trailer Park is doing well. In fact, I think next month we're going to go there and do a, we're going to recap and go back and look at it a, a year after. So we uh, thanks for bringing that up. We are going to go do that. So. Uh, see, people pay attention. They do, that's great. Okay, so let's give them kind of a tour. You guys, uh, sure. we have a little bit of Wi-Fi thing in here, so we're going to hope that this sticks out here. Sure. But yep, so come on through here. So traditionally we have churches who are able to host our families and that relationship is over 30 years old with many of those churches and we really, that's a strong bond. We love that they come in and work with our families, we love the sort of social capital as you call it that they can lend to the families, right. that's a wonderful thing. So they're still going to come here and they're going to cook, this is a kitchen that we're setting up. Oh, but nice. Warming plates. We're going to have our own food for Lane County pantry back here. The first delivery for food is actually coming this afternoon. So you guys, the church is, oh, nice facility. Look at this right here, too. Yeah. Yep. All of these things are from our store. So the families will still come. The churches will come here, and um, still we still value volunteers. And if there's anybody out there who wants to volunteer, uh, get a hold. Go to the first place, right? Yeah, come to first place. Give us a call. You can email me. It's Eileen.Shanti at svdp.us. Can we show them this real yeah, fast? Yeah, absolutely. You guys, so this, this is, is the living room. room. Look. A it's nice, big together. living room. So we're going to have up to about 80 to 100 people in here, and we really wanted it to make it feel like home. This is... By and far, this is mostly Pottery Barn um, stuff. We get great donations from them. Seriously? Yeah, this is our... This you guys, so they're coming in and Pottery Barn furnishes this with stuff. Um, oh my gosh, this we, is awesome. We have, this will be a sort of a nursing baby mama room um, and papa room for, you know, we're, we're finishing up the painting. But um, so that when a, a baby cries in the middle of the night, there's a quiet warm place for that's so considerate um, so people and plus you feel embarrassed you right. know well you don't want to be the person with the baby who i mean i know i have a baby at home and then we've all been there about your baby waking up all your other children but then you have 60 other people that you're worrying about them waking up so this is a nice place to retreat we have really great offices we have some offices in the back we're going to do parenting class um where 
a really great model to um, give wraparound support to our families as they're going through this transition and working through stability. Okay, you guys, now this is where the rubber hits the road. And I hope we get our signal in here. So this used to be the sanctuary, and guess what? It still is. It's just a sanctuary of a different kind. So these are little rooms set up. So each family will have a little room where they can go. I'm gonna get a light one here. Yeah. So see there's little beds in here and they have blankets and pillows and things like that that they set up for them. But the whole sanctuary is now set up yeah. to actually house people. See, so little families in here. Um, they'll and have an overnight staff up here in this little landing. That's been oh, so the old area where so they used to do all the all musical the sound stuff, stuff, sound stuff yep. is now going to be a, a monitoring. Staff, yep, so we have someone awake and alert. Oh, all this is so staff. awesome. So you can kind of see from back here, we've set up these cubicles with the blankets. We've set them out for a moment. Let's see if I can find you there as well. Oh, we have one. But look at, okay, here's what I love. Okay, just a sec, Eileen, hold on. So look at this. Okay, so here you go. Here's a little shelter area. And then, symbolically, we go there. Huh. Says it all. This is what it's all about, folks. Right there. Rubber hits the road. I love yeah, this. We're really excited. This, this allows us to operate overnight, um, 365 days of the year. So in, in the past, this was only a school um, operation like so during the school year and we're now going to be moving to, through the summer this summer we had about 10 different families who were desperately in need of shelter we had the police coming to us begging for shelter for families because they were sleeping in tents you know in di di different parks around the city and there was just no there was just no shelter for them and so this will really give the ability for families to be in a safe spot all year round and that's really what we want to accomplish so what I want to so what does this say about our, our community? Um, I, well, I think that it says that we're creative and that we have a heart for, you know, recognizing the need and then also working towards sustainable solutions that are really going to make make big differences in people's life. It's not a band-aid, right? We have we were able this we were able to hire another case manager, so we're doing pretty aggressive case management with our families where we're trying to look at the barriers that they have towards housing instability, meet those barriers and get them into stable housing. That's the whole goal of this So program. the next step from here, if somebody if a family ends up here, the mm -hmm. next step is that's stable housing. Exactly. So what are the barriers that are keeping people out of housing? Are, is, do you have an eviction on your record? What can we do? Can we send you to a renter's rehab class where you can learn about how to be the best renter so that a landlord will look at that and say, okay, you, you kind of have the savviness. Can we work on job skills? Can we think about what are your goals? What are your dreams for yourself? And how can we help move you to that place? So in a way, this is like a foundation builder. That's right. Or really a foundation rebuilder. Yeah, right. You're retooling families yeah. to, to take to take control of their lives yeah and empowering them and the truth is is that you know I think maybe you and I know but most people I think maybe forget this that we're all you know one two three steps away from homelessness right. ourselves and if you are coming from um, intergenerational poverty where all the people in your family that you also know are barely making you know bake, making ends meet when you fall on hard, hard times, who do you ask for for help? Right. You know, I'm privileged. I have tons of privilege. If we, if my family had a hard time, I, I have family that I could, I could depend on for support. But so many families don't have right. that, and so this really allows the stability to be here to really work towards those goals. And the end goal is how stable housing. So really, what it does is it gives our community the chance to be that voice. Yes, absolutely. To be that support for them. So we really, you're kind of creating families here. We are, and you know the the relationship relationships that we have with the churches, the relationships that we have with the service groups that can come in, those are real lasting relationships that can be built. The social capital, it's not its not just a little thing. You know, in, in middle class systems, I know a dentist, I know someone that can work on my car, I know someone who's hiring for this job, and we, we network together. But being able to lend some of that social capital to our families, oh, you're a, you know how to do car maintenance, I know someone who's hiring. And then all of a sudden that connection is met, and that's how we can share that 
that. And these relationships are, are real that are created. We have people who have been put in contact with landlords because of this program, with jobs because of this program, lasting relationships, and that matters too. Can someone, a family or a parent, get counseling help without staying at the shelter? Yeah, you can go through options, options counseling. Are you talking about case management or mental health counseling? So you can go through St. Vinny's, you, you guys have programs for that. We have, we don't have mental health counseling, but we definitely can make referrals. There's there's several different agencies in town. So that who we would they with. get a hold of, Jerry? I'm, I'm answering your yeah. question, Jerry, so. O options counseling would be someplace that, if you have Trillium, you can access options counseling. And Jerry, if you have other questions, get a hold of St. Vincent DePaul. Yeah, we're happy to make the referral. They'll make that, they'll, they'll yeah. get that connection for you um, okay so again there's a open house for the community That's on right. Friday night this yes. coming Friday mm -hmm. 4 to 6 yep we have ice cream it's an ice cream social we'll get to do a tour you'll kind of see what it, what it will look like and um, you know we really want this to be a community neighborhood effort so we want it to feel like the community here in South Eugene is part of it too. And so the and neighbors have been overwhelmingly wonderful to They've you. They've been really, really welcoming. We've had welcoming committees. We've had people who have <laughs> come over and brought over little kits, so welcome kits. We've had blankets made. We've had people calling and asking how they can get involved. It's been really tremendous. And as the other Eileen said earlier, they are always looking for help and donations right. and things like that. So it's another way you can get involved. Absolutely. Um, I'm falling in love with you guys. Somebody <laughs> yeah, already has said on here, you're a sweet woman. <laughs> she really is a sweet woman. But they're all, this is like the heart of St. Vincent de Paul. And it starts with Terry, goes to our new Arlene, Eileen, the other folks. Oh, you know what? We should introduce the uh, yeah, case manager. Yeah, that would be great. You guys, because she's the nicest so, person here. So Becky is over here. She, where is Becky? Becky's with Food for Lane. Oh, Becky's with Food oh. for Lane County, so we're getting oh. a delivery. We're getting so, a delivery of food. Becky has been doing this for nine years. Okay, so Food for Lane County is delivering food. I hear a truck out oh, there. Oh, right out here. Oh, look at this. Okay, in action. This is how this is how we feed people. These are our volunteers that show up for Food for Lane County every every week. Okay, guys, you're live. Just so you know, if you're wanted, <laughs> here it is. This is where the rubber hits the road, guys. The food is coming. These guys are volunteers. Is Becky inside? All right, so we're gonna go back inside here, guys. Thank you. So we get food for Lane County delivery twice, twice a month, twice a week. We get cold food, we get um, sort of pantry staples, but we're always looking for cash or gift cards to grocery stores to really kind of sure up the, the extras that we need. We need, always need milk and eggs and sort of those more expensive items that we can't usually find at the Where is that, Becky? Hey, Becky. Rick would like to say hi to you. So we... Hi, Rick. <laughs> so how excited are you? I am very excited. I am so excited. This is um, such an opportunity for our families, you know, to have a better place to be, for us to be able to serve more families. We have new families coming in every day that don't have a place to be. Um, you know, they're sleeping in their cars. And this will give us an opportunity to serve more of those. Jason, actually, we're on West Amazon. So you come down East Amazon because there's some road work, and then you turn, and we're right on West Amazon where it connects in the middle. So, Fox Hollow. At Fox Hollow. So um, let me ask you one thing. So what do you see in these families that amaze you? Um, resiliency, um, bravery. Um, I was telling somebody about one of our families the other day that was in night shelter, got housed. Her whole life was turning around. She had a job that she wanted, took her kids to California to visit their father and was hit by a car, almost killed, um, lost an eye. And she's back and she's got her kids. And you know, and she said, Miss Becky, I've done this before. I can do it again. And she's already on her way back after, I don't know, brain surgery and seven or eight surgeries. and. Um, and a lot of our families are, you know, I mean, maybe not to that extreme, but they are amazingly resilient people who just keep wanting to make life better for their kids. So can I ask you one more thing? Sure. Why does that bring a tear to your eye? Um, I don't know. I just, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm a blessed person. And, and, just, and I've never had to go through so many of these hardships that our families do. And just to see them struggling and... Um, worrying about their children and trying to make life better just touches me and I'm 
I'm really happy to be a part of an organization that allows us to help them. Somebody on here says, yay Beck, you're the real deal, one of the most loved people at the night shelter. Aww, thank you. <laughs> sweet. Oh, but the food's here, so we don't want to get in the way of that. Yeah. First food for County like order. This is the first order of food coming into the shelter, guys. Because the families will be moving in on Monday. And what a great place. The frozen stuff. Lots of meat and cool. Okay. So you know what? We'll say one last word with the other Eileen. And Eileen, thank you. Yes, absolutely. So hold on, guys. I want to get one last parting word in here. Eileen, one last thing. Oh, you guys are sitting here watching us on here. I see what you're doing. You're cheating. All right, you two. Oh, get in here. So introduce yourself. And who are you? I'm Eva Savage. And what do you do? I'm the new program director for, for the First Aid Oh, wow. Center. So this is your thing. Yes, well, I mean, I'm very brand new. I've just been here two months, so. And I'm so excited. where are you from? I'm from Hawaii. So when you came to Eugene, Oregon, and you saw that a family donated this building, and so you see what's going on. Yeah, it's amazing. Well, it's amazing stuff happening here in Eugene. So you guys are both new to our family here yes, in town. Yes, are. Look so, at the newbies. So, um, <laughs> From the well, warm state. Jumping right in. <laughs> so, um, again, uh, you guys, this is St. Vincent de Paul, and this is what they yes. do. Um, this is what they've been doing for 30 years. Yes. But the more we as a community get involved yes, and do statue. stuff like this, yep. Um, this is what makes it happen. Yeah, um, well, you all make it happen. Working right. with our staff yep, yep. and being so generous. And we're really happy to, to be a part programs. of this whole huge, great yep. thing that's happening in this community. So, I look forward to seeing everybody. Oh, you guys are welcome. It's my favorite thing. I love <laughs> yeah. these shows. All right, thank you, too. Thank you, bye. All right, so you guys, again, um, party on Friday for the whole community in the neighborhood. Uh, come in and see it, four to six, ice cream social, all that kind of stuff. Find out what really is working and how you can get involved. And, um, and then the families, uh, they start finding their permanent home here, a, a temporary home, but a place that's permanent uh, for a program, and that happens on um, Monday. So pretty nice you can live in a community um, that does this. You know, a lot of people talk about homelessness and, and what we can and can't do. And I think when we realize how much power we have as people, uh, we can do way more than we ever thought. So to whoever you are, that family that donated this building, man, bless you. And thank you so much for doing this for our town and for the rest of us. Now, let's don't let it sit idle and get in here and get involved and uh, become part of a solution um, rather than just talking about it. Because we can talk and talk about solving homelessness all we want. But until we put our feet and, and our rubber and our mouths and our hearts where, where it really matters, it's not going to happen. And now we got a place where it can happen. I'm Rick Dancer. Um, this is Get Real. These are the shows I love. Um, so anyway, we'll... I'll talk to you. We'll be back tomorrow with something else, but I can't remember right now because I'm too involved thinking about what this is. So uh, I will see you tomorrow. Uh, 1.30, actually, we're going to be at Food for Lane County tomorrow with Dave Camerer and the staff at Summit Funding. They're going to be putting together baskets, so it kind of all relates. So uh, we'll see you tomorrow at 1.30. All right, get real.